this video we are going over c-spine supine or long board immobilization of a patient for your nr emt skill so the first thing you want to do is say bsi tell the proctor that you have everything you need for this skill the next thing is you want to tell your imaginary partner or your partner that's actually there you want to tell them to maintain c-spine so you want to tell them to Hold the head in line with the body and do not let go until you tell them to let go. After that, you're going to check for CMS. So circulation, motor, and sensory. I'm going to check for pulses on both radio sides. Ask if you have pulses. I do have pulses. Tell, tell the patient to go ahead and squeeze your fingers. And then ask your patient which finger it is that you are touching. So after you check the upper extremities, you want to go down to the lower extremities and also check for CMS. So check for pedal pulses or a cap refill, either one is good. You also want to tell the patient to go ahead and press down, push up, and then ask them either which toe or which foot it is you're touching. So after CMS, we're going to go ahead and measure for a C collar size. If you are not sure how to measure this against your patient, go ahead and look at the CAD video and I go into detail as far as how to measure this against your patient. So I'm going to measure for a C collar size, about 4 inches, that's about 4 inches. Mind you, you still have your, your partner right here or your imaginary partner maintaining C-spine, okay? I'm going to put this on my patient. Alright, ask the patient, is that comfortable? Is that in place good? We're going to go ahead and say it is good, okay? After that, you want to tell your partner, so I'm going to have my partner here, my other partner, go ahead and kneel next to me, and I'm going to have them get a handful of calf and a handful of, of waist right here. Before you do that though, let me back up. You have to place the board appropriately. The best way to place the board is to place it next to your patient about 12 inches above the head. What that's going to do is going to, pre is going to eliminate the need for you to have to constantly move the patient back and forth up and down this board to get them placed correctly. If you do it right, by putting the board at least 12 inches above the head, you only have to move the patient once up into the side or maybe twice and that's it. So that's the whole point behind putting the board at least 12 inches above the head. So after that, I have my, my one partner maintaining C-spine on the head. My other partner is going to get a handful of calves, so right here, and then get a handful of waist. So put your other hand right here, so that hand up over here. No, the other way around, so put that hand over there. This one over here. All right. Now, did you see what just happened? That's going to happen in the NREMT. Most likely, you're going to have a proctor, and they're going to, they're going to pretend that they don't know what's going on. And it's your job to correct them. So you want to tell your, 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 pro, your proctor slash partner to exactly where to place your hand. So this hand is perfect, and then you want to get that hand and put it right here only on this one. And then you, you're, you're going to be on the torso side, and you want to get a handful of shoulder and a handful of pocket. And you, you want your hand to be on top of your partner's hand so you can reach over for that board. Alright, so on hands count, we're going to flip the patient to me. So one, two, three, let's go ahead and flip the patient over to my side. While I'm back here, I'm going to check for a decap TLS and step off. I'm going to place the board behind my patient. Now, when you have the board behind your patient, it's a good idea to have the board at a 45 degree angle and apply slight pressure. By you applying slight pressure, when you move the patient onto the board, they'll land more in line with the board. So, all right, on a head count, we're gonna put the patient back onto the board. One, two, three, put the patient on the board. Perfect. Okay, on head count, we're going to shift and move the patient to their right, so it's always to the patient's right. To the right, up approximately, let's say, 10 inches. So go ahead and grab the waist, and I'll grab the shoulders, like this. So put this hand right here, 
and that hand over here. There we go. And on the head count, we're going to go up and to the right, the patient's right, about 10 inches. So one, two, three, let's go. One, two, three, let's go. All right, so my patient looks like they're pretty much in line. Their legs have to be straightened out. We're good, thank you. So now, if you're using spider straps, it's ex the exact same concept as if you're doing uh, just regular straps or duct tape. Most places that I've worked, worked at, we use spider straps, so that there's a very good chance you're gonna be using spider strap, but if you're not using spider straps, the sequence remains the same, okay? It doesn't matter regardless of what you're actually using. You want to make sure that the straps are all lined up perfectly, that we don't have any issues when you're tightening everything up onto your patient. Alright, so as far as the torso goes, you want to put one strap nipple line and one strap on the waistline. So you want to go ahead and immobilize the head. You can do it by putting the little triangles on the side or some places use the big spongy uh, yellow blocks on the side. And then you want to tape those against the board by doing the X techniques. You want to get some tape, start right here, and I'm going to lift this up to kind of show you a little bit better. So you want to apply tape right here or a strap and bring it down and under and to the other corner. And then you want to get some tape and strap it up to the bottom right here and come up and over over the forehead to stabilize that head and to stabilize those blocks or triangles. So after the, the torso, then the head is secure, you want to go ahead and strap down the lower extremities. You want to put one of the straps mid-femur. So what I mean by mid-femur is right between the pelvis and the knee. One thing that I, that I just remembered was that you want to go ahead and tell the proctor that you're going to look for padding or any voice to apply padding. As long as you catch yourself, usually it's okay if you miss it and catch yourself. It's not a critical failure per the NRMT, but you do want to get all your points, okay? The last strap, you want to put it, you want to put it mid-half, so between the foot and between the knee. A little bit lower on this one. Nope, that's gonna be it. Now mind you, sometimes it's gonna come out a little funky just because everybody's anatomy is completely different, so it's not always going to line up perfectly, but you want to get it as best as possible to the, the landmarks, okay? Okay, so I did torso, head, legs. Now I want to immobilize or secure the upper extremities, I already secured them onto the board, so I'm done there. The last step is now to recheck CMS on your patient. So I'm going to go ahead and check for 
radial pulses, are they present? Yes, they are. Squeeze my fingers. Which finger am I touching? Which finger am I touching? Check your pedal pulses. Press down, push up. Which foot am I touching? Which foot am I touching? Or which toe, which toe? Either one's good. And that's it for the entire scenario.